Hey what's up guys, welcome to the Swiper.js crash course. In the previous video, we have created a random password generator with vanilla JavaScript. In case if you have missed that video, I'll put the link on the description so that you can check that out after watching this video. In today's video, we're going to learn about Swiper.js. Swiper.js is a sliding animation library. If you go to swiper.js.com, you will see this landing page. And on the right hand side, you can see a white box. Actually, this is a slide. I can slide it from right to left with a nice animation. We also have two more sliders. It has a card effect, you can see. And it also has a flip effect. They're looking really good. Swiper.js has tons of other features you can see. That's why it is really popular. It has almost 30,000 stars. You can also use Swiper.js with any modern web framework like React, Angular or Vue. And the documentation of Swiper.js is really good if you visit demos. And on the demos page, there are tons of demos available just for you. You can play with them if you want. But we're not going to cover every single thing that Swiper.js can do for us. You can always learn from the documentation. We're going to learn Swiper.js by building a simple application, which is this. This is a carousel image slider built with Swiper.js. The image that you are seeing is actually a slide. I can slide it from right to left like this. And I can also slide it from left to right. You can see. And this type of animation, you will see applications like Instagram and other image-based applications. So if you are interested about today's project, please like this video and subscribe to my channel to watch more of these project-based videos. So without further ado, let's get started. Let me give you a quick introduction of mine. My name is Anjan. I'm a full-stack web developer who can develop complex web application from UI to backend systems. You can watch my work by visiting my portfolio website, datonjohn.me, then just go to projects. And here you will see all of the projects that I have worked on. I'm looking for a new opportunity in a company where I can provide great value with my skills and knowledge. So if you are a recruiter or someone who wants a new team member who can solve problems, can develop real world application, feel free to contact me. You can reach out to me by email, LinkedIn or Twitter. All of the links are going to be in the description just for you. Alright, enough of my introduction. Let's get straight into the tutorial. Alright guys, so I have this basic HTML file set up. Uh, this file is already linked with style.css and index.js. Both of the files are completely empty. Now we're going to use swiper.js with a CDN link. So just go to swiper.js.com and go to get started. Now there are different ways you can use swiper.js. You can uh, install with npm, but we're going to use CDN. So these are the CDNs. So I'm going to copy the link tag and I'll paste it on the head and then I'll grab the script tag and I'll put it above the index.js script tag. Okay, so these are the CDNs we need for Swiper.js. Now we need a layout to work with. So if you scroll down, here we have a section uh, at Swiper HTML layout. So this is the layout that we have to use to use Swiper.js. So basically we will have a main container and then there will have a Swiper wrapper that is required. Uh, then inside the wrapper, we will have slides and inside the slides, you can put whatever you want, picture, text, whatever you want actually. And here are some optional elements that you can add for example, like pagination, the little dot at the bottom, then the navigation button on the left and right side. Then you can also add a scroll bar if you want. These are the optional elements. So let's quickly do that. But first of all, we need to add a container that will contain the swiper element itself. So let's first add a container with a class of container. Then we will need a swiper container, which will be the main container. It will have a class of swiper. Then we will need a required wrapper with a class of swiper wrapper. Inside the wrapper, we have to include the slide. Um, every image that you're seeing is a slide itself. Okay, so it will have a class of swiper slide. 
and inside the swiper slide we will have our image uh, but like I've told you that these images are going to be completely responsive by using their aspect ratio uh, let me show you uh, if I shrink the browser width you can see that the image is shrinking too but it is keep maintaining its aspect ratio and that's why it is responsive we don't need to use any kind of media queries so I want to add this feature to our website uh, but if you want to learn more about it, I have made an entire video about it. You can check that out. I'll put the link on the description. To do that, we have to include another wrapper for the image in the swiper slide. So I will create another element, image wrapper. And inside the image wrapper, we will add the image tag. And the source will be images slash one dot jpeg. For the first image and we will create six light for the swiper wrapper so I'm just gonna copy this slide and I'll paste it five more times and now let's change the image source this will be 2.jpg then it will be 3.jpg then it will be 4.jpg and it will be 5.jpg and finally it will be 6.jpg and uh, here you can see only one image we don't see others because some styles has already been attached because we have attached the uh, swiper styles as a CDN so don't worry about it and these are the required layout elements we need for swiper.js now like I've told you you can also add optional elements like pagination then navigation buttons so i'm just gonna copy this from here we don't need a scroll bar so i'll copy this from here and i'll paste it um inside the swiper container not the swiper wrapper okay i will delete these comments let's format the code a bit and if i scroll down you can see this navigation icons already Okay, so now we need to add some custom styles in the style.css. It won't be much. So first of all, we need to... Actually, I'm going to decrease the screen width. So first of all, I need to reset the default style of browsers. So padding will be 0. Margin will be 0. Then box sizing will be border box. Then we will need the body tag. The max width will be 100 view width, overflow x will be hidden so that we don't get any horizontal scrolling. Now we need to style the container with the container class. So container will make background color uh, a hex value. It will be 292929. Oops. Then I'll make display. Uh, grid then place items to center and this will make everything at the center horizontally and vertically and we also need to add min height it will be 100 view height so that it takes the whole screen now we need to style the swiper container itself so swiper And I need to make the width to 80% and then we need to style the image wrapper in the swiper slide now it is looking very weird actually so don't worry about it we will fix it in a minute uh, so you need to select the image wrapper the width will be 100% then position will be relative and we need to add padding top now the padding top value de will depend on the aspect ratio that you want so we want the standard horizontal aspect ratio which is 9 by 16 
and to use that aspect ratio we need to divide 9 by 16 we will get like 0 0.5625 and we have to multiply that with 100 so we will get 56.25 and we need to use that value as a percentage value so we need to use 56.25 percent and again if you don't understand please watch that video and now we need to select the image inside the image wrapper So image inside image wrapper. Now we need to make it position absolute. Then top will be zero. Uh, left will be zero. Width will be hundred percent. And height will also be hundred percent. And object fit to cover and object position to center for horizontal axis and top for vertical axis and you can see the image layout has been fixed the image is looking pretty good and uh, let's increase the screen width you can see the image is also growing but the aspect ratio is still the same okay so that's how you make image responsive using aspect ratio now we have these buttons but we cannot uh, swipe the images we have to add JavaScript for that. So we have added the Swiper CDNs. So we get access to the Swiper class. So we need to create a new instance of that Swiper class. So new Swiper. And for the first argument, we have to pass the container selector, which is uh, which has the Swiper class. So I will pass Swiper. And for the second argument, we have to pass an object and inside the object you can pass many options I will show you what are they but I will leave it for empty now and this will return you another object so I'm gonna store it const swiper so let's save it now the swiper just should work so let's try to slide the image and you can see we can now slide the image and it is looking pretty good the animations are pretty good so that's how you use uh, Swiper.js. So let me show you how you can customize uh, Swiper.js. For example, if we keep sliding the images and you can see we cannot slide anymore because there are no more images. Uh, but if you want to have an infinite loop, then you can pass an option in the options object, which is loop. And you can set it to true. By default, it is false. So let's slide. And you can see we have a loop and it's looking pretty good now how do i know about the options object it is pretty simple it is from the api documentation of swiper.js so if we go to the top here is a link to api so let's click on it and this is the api page of swiper.js and here you will find everything that you can do with swiper.js all of the option parameters their default values possible values explanation everything you will find here this is a pretty good documentation i cannot show you everything that you can do here whatever you want to do just look for keyword and you will find the possible options i will show you some of the things that you can customize for example i will show you now how to use this navigation icon to navigate to another image i mean another slide uh, if i click on the navigation icon now nothing is happening because by default navigation is turned off so we need to add a navigation property for that so navigation and it will be an object and inside the object uh, let me show you the documentation so inside the object you have to specify the previous element and the next element i mean you have to specify the class names so we have used exactly the same class names so we can just copy paste this whole object and uh, i will paste it here and let's delete this and our navigation should work fine so let's click on this and you can see we can navigate to the next slides very smoothly so it's really working fine so and uh, now let's add pagination I mean the bullets the little bullets that you're seeing at the bottom so let's add them to add pagination we need to add a pagination object um, here this is the pagination object and I'm just gonna copy it from here and paste it again so basically inside the object we have specified the net pagination element which is um, 
this one and we have set types to bullets and there are other types I will show you in a minute so let's see if it works or not and as you can see on the bottom they are very tiny but there are some dots and if I navigate to next images the bullets are changing according to the current slide but we cannot click on these bullets to navigate to do that we can add another option which is clickable so uh, clickable to true and so let's click on any of the bullet and you can see we can click up the bullets to navigate to any of the slides now there are other types of pagination type available so here you can see so these are the pagination type that is available we have bullets fraction we have progress bar so let's try progress bar so we will use progress bar this time and you can see at the top there is a progress bar so let's navigate to the other slides and you can see the progress bar is also changing and that is looking really good you can also play with other uh, options if you want. We can also use keyboard to navigate between slides. To do that, you just need to add a keyboard property and set it to true. By default, it is false. So you can see that I can navigate with my keyboard. I can also navigate with my mouse wheel. So add a property, mouse wheel, and set it to true. So let's try with mouse wheel and you can see it's really working. I'm using my mouse wheel to navigate between the slides and we can also change the sliding effects. This is the default behavior, but we have a bunch of other effects available by Swiper.js. So just go to parameters section and go to uh, the effect, find the effect property. Where is that? Um, Effect, effect. So here's the effect property. So we have slide, which is the default one. We also have fade, cube, cover flow, flip, creative, cards. You can play with them, but I'm going to show you a few of them. So let's first see the creative effect. If you go to the modules section and find the creative effect where it is here. So just go to the creative effect section. And here you will see the necessary options that you can use to add the creative effect. So basically in the object you have to pass an effect property and the value has to be creative and then you can add additional options to the creative effect and you don't have to understand everything. So I'm just going to copy the code and paste it inside this object. Oops, I'm missing a semicolon. So now let's slide. Now you can see it's a very different effect and it's really looking good right better than the sliding effect and you can obviously change other options like you can also change the translate properties then there are other options available i can also use another effect called cover flow i will comment out this line so that you can have them and all of the source code can be found on my github repository so check them out i'll put the link on the description so another effect that i want to use is the cover flow effect so just use this code effect equals to cover flow. So now let's see the cover effect. And you can see the effect is a little bit different than before and it looks good. So this is the cover flow effect. You can try out the other effects. Uh, the last thing that I want to show you is how to change the colors. I mean the progress bar color, then the icon color, the bullet colors and so on. Now I'm gonna change the progress bar to bullet again oops actually it is bullets not bullet all right so now we have the bullets on the bottom let's see how we can change the color so if you go to the pagination api here we have another option that we can pass to pagination object which is bullet active class you can specify a custom class to this property but the default value is this swiper pagination bullet active instead of adding a custom class we're going to use this class to change the color so i'm going to copy this class name let's go to style.css and at the bottom and we have to use the background color property to change the color so background color 
will be like red and you can see at the bottom the bullet color is now red now if you want to change the navigation icon colors uh, you have to select the class names swiper button previous and swiper button next so I will copy them from here and I will paste it again and I have to use a comma so I'm selecting both of the class names same time to change the color we have to use the color property instead of background color because it is an icon I will make it red and you can see that the colors has been changed now what if you want to change the size then you have to use the after pseudo selector of these two class names so I'll copy them again and let's add after pseudo selector and we have to use font size for that let's make it one rem and you can see that the icons are too tiny so let's increase the value let's make it 2 rem and you can see the icon size has been changed so that's how you can customize swiper js now like i told you you can do much more than that and that's all i wanted to show you if the video has been helpful for you don't forget to like this video in the next video we're going to create this typewriting effect with vanilla html css and javascript so if you are interested then subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the video and if you have any question about today's project, feel free to comment down below. If you want to see daily tips and tricks, you can follow me on LinkedIn, Twitter or Instagram as that Anjun. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.